Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about expansion devices. Um, there are three common expansion devices that you'll encounter in the automotive industry. First, we have our orifice tubes. We have our L-type, and you can see I call it an L-type because it kind of looks like an L, if you will. L-type thermal expansion device. And then we have also our block-type thermal expansion devices, also referred to as an H-block. Okay, The orifice tube, you can see there's various different orifice tubes that I have here. Um, the orifice tubes here, General Motors, Ford, um, Chrysler also runs version of orifice tubes as well. Um, the orifice tube is actually a fixed diameter restriction in the air conditioning system. It is in the liquid line between the condenser outlet and the evaporator inlet. The orifice tube can be found in one of three places in that section of the air conditioning system. It can be fixed in the condenser outlet tube. It can be fixed in the liquid line between the evaporator and the condenser, or it can be fixed in the inlet tube of the evaporator core. Um, the biggest uh, reason that we have moved, primarily when the orifice tube system first came out, General Motors was the first manufacturer that introduced it in the middle 70s. It was for, referred to as a clutch cycling orifice tube system. When the orifice tube systems first came out, the manufacturers had the orifice tube fixed in the inlet tube of the evaporator core. It moved out of the evaporator core because when you shut the system off and the pressure's equalized, the customers were complaining about noise, key off, they were hearing the refrigerant equalized, manufacturers moved the orifice tube out of the evaporator core. Um, I do want to point out, I've mentioned that the orifice tube is actually a fixed diameter. So in other words, this restriction or this uh, restriction for the orifice tube, it doesn't change, which can be a drawback when we have high heat days, high heat load on the evaporator core. Um, also, you can see it has a screen. It actually serves also as a screen. Okay, so any debris that would move through the system that moves up to and through this orifice tube would actually get restricted in that screen so it would plug that orifice tube. Um, some other things I want to point out, the two little tabs on the orifice tube. Those are actually locating tabs to hook a tool to to remove the orifice tube. Um, the O-rings that are on the orifice tube, the orifice tube would go in this direction going into the tube that it seats into. Okay, the orifice tube does have a direction and it's printed. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see the arrow on the orifice tube. That is our direction that the orifice tube would go in the direction that the refrigerant is flowing. So if this were going into an evaporator core, it would go pointing into the tube. Um, the uh, orifice tubes are very inexpensive to manufacture. Um, compared to some of the other components that we have here that we'll talk about. Again, the biggest drawback to this is the orifice tube is limited on the amount of refrigerant that it can allow to enter the evaporator core, unlike our L-type or H-block type valves. Um, the manufacturers have manufactured and produced what we refer to as a variable orifice tube that will vary in size based on evaporator load. Also, a lot of our newer vehicles to now today are using an electronic orifice tube where the electronic climate control module or possibly the PCM, whichever module is controlling the function of this component, can change the orifice size inside this valve. It can pulse this valve and allow more or less refrigerant to enter the evaporator core. Our L-type or our block-type expansion devices they attach to the evaporator inlet, also our high side liquid line that is between the condenser and the evaporator core. This tube right here, this is what we call an equalizer tube or a capillary tube. And this capillary tube clamps to the evaporator core outlet tube, or you could refer to it as the evaporator core exhaust pipe. And the purpose of this tube, when it clamps to the evaporator tube, it measures or monitors, if you will, a few degrees of superheat that occurs inside the evaporator core. So as heat is applied to this sensing bulb, it's actually charged with refrigerant. 
And just like in a sealed system, as heat is applied to this capillary tube, the refrigerant boils, the liquid state changes to a vapor, and it pushes through this tube, pushes on the diaphragm inside the top of the thermal expansion valve, and it pushes down on a pental valve inside of this TXV. And as it moves that pental, it can increase or decrease the flow of refrigerant going into the evaporator core. Our H block, it bolts to the evaporator core as well. It also has the high side line attached to it. The difference, biggest difference between the block type valve and the L type valve, the block type valve, as you can see, has no sensing bulb or no external capillary tube. It actually has an internal bleed inside the block that allows evaporator pressure to bleed inside the block and pushes on the diaphragm at the top of the expansion block, which naturally would allow the panel inside the block, if you can see the panel in the block, it would allow that panel to move to increase or decrease the flow of refrigerant going into the evaporator core. The big advantage of our L-type or H-block type valves, again, is they can respond to the load on the evaporator core as opposed to our fixed diameter orifice tubes. They cannot. If you look, I have an evaporator core here that has the L-type valve attached to it. This is our high side liquid line coming into the TXV valve. You can see our capillary tube clamps to our suction line and you can see the tape there okay so this would be the high side inlet coming into the expansion device and then this would be our suction line the refrigerant exiting the evaporator core okay so this capillary tube the sensing bulb is clamped to that suction line and it's monitoring the efficiency of the evaporator core. So as the refrigerant in this capillary tube is boiling, liquids in the bottom, it's changing states to a gas at the top of the tube, puts pressure in the capillary tube, pressure on top of the diaphragm, moving the internal valve inside the TXV to increase or decrease the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator core. One note right here, the capillary tube, anytime that we service any air conditioning system that uses the L-type expansion valve, this capillary tube, it's important that the suction tube where it is clamped to is very clean and this capillary tube is clamped to it securely. You can see right now this vehicle, this is a vehicle that I repaired, I pulled this evaporator core out and you can see how loose that is. It had that tar tape holding the capillary tube in place on the suction line. That's a no-no. That needs to be held in place with some type of clamp, even possibly some type of zip tie would be fine, but it has to be securely attached to that tube and then it has to be insulated and protected because we want to make sure, and this serves as a great insulator, we want to make sure that it's insulated from any of the other temperature around the sensing bulb. It only measures the temperature of that evaporator tube, the refrigerant exiting the evaporator core. Next video, we'll talk about accumulator tanks and receiver dryers. Thank you.